I just saw something I never thought I would see. The twins acting like geniuses? It's actually kind of beautiful! Oh my god! <laughs> My God, I just this episode was a breath breath of fresh air. I I know this wasn't a breather episode at all. It was just pure comedy gold, as well as having a lot of heart. I oh okay. This episode is called the Eel Effect, and so now okay. Burke has like this epidemic of eel pox. Because I guess uh, they don't get chicken pox or even yak pox or sheep pox. <laughs> Oddly. Uh, no. Uh, eels. All the same. Eels. Well, eels. So they try. So the writers try to use goat. Uh, uh, try to help Goaty gather the ingredients, and it's a long list of ingredients. Yeah. And, and hey, it's good to see her come back again. Yeah, it is. It's been, been, been quite some time. Yeah, I thought she died. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> But no, it's it's interesting seeing that, seeing that um, for one, uh, it's something new. We never see Vikings get sick. Not not a lot in this. We not a lot in in the series or in the movies. No, and well, I would admit that eel pox is kind of out <laughs> yeah. there. But hey, it's something, and the fact that. Interesting effects, but that'd be discussed later. Yeah, but right. and it's kind of nice to know that sometimes when sometimes uh, you know those people who who when they are sick they tr they pretend like they're not sick or saying oh it's just the sniffles. It's kind of nice to see that in this episode, especially from uh, from Stoic, especially when he's sneezing up chalk <laughs> <laughs> on all over. Well, it's now out. It's not living up his name. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> oh no oh no oh no that's just bronchitis oh god I thought you had the eel pox <laughs> no I'm getting getting over that we got modern medicine now ah uh. so they they get all the ingredients except for one because it's not on okay apparently they're not on Burke they're on something called Healer's Island yeah yeah and it is was it the blood of an eel? Uh, bloodborne eel. Bloodborne eel. So they just need an they need an eel, which kind of makes sense. You need an eel to counteract chicken pox. Does that mean they use chickens to counteract chicken pox? Uh, that might scar some kids. Yeah, if they're vegetarians, or if they or if chickens like their favorite food. Yeah, but any. But anyway, and so yeah, dragons. A lot of them do not like eels. They're just downright afraid of them. And so, but Hiccup, you know, volunteers himself to, to you know, to go there. And yeah, to, to go get to, to to go to Eel Island to get this eel. Mm -hmm. And my first thought would be like, well, why not go find Torch? Yeah, yeah, go find Tor Torch. I thought thought that they were. On the island that's very close to Burke, you know the one that looks like the helm, like uh, the horn on a Viking's helmet. Yeah. In fact, this whole thing could have probably been avoided if they did that. Yeah, but then we probably wouldn't. We probably wouldn't have gotten all this gold. All this gold. We got some really great shots. Use of use of lighting. Some some light streaks again, courtesy of that little Spielberg touch, and also nice camera angles. Camera angles and good POV, uh, an interesting POV shot. Oh yeah, but so of course one can go expected that nothing goes as planned when you're hiccup, mm -hmm. which includes uh, strangling eels. Strangling eels, yeah. It knocks him, it knocks him into the water, and he's almost he's almost strangled by an eel. But Toothless is able to stun them uh, with a plasma. With a plasma blast, but Hic Hiccup grabs one that is, I think, almost about to bite him. Like I thought, eels are supposed to, were supposed to be like electric. Yeah, they're electric. Electric. I don't really know. 
Though, no, but but uh, unless you're the Mori, you know, they bite and oh. they hurt. You know from experience? No, but I seen what the bite looks like. Oh, dis- discovery. Yeah. <laughs> and in, I get. I want to say kind of a ballsy move by DreamWorks, actually showing Toothless biting off the head of an eel. Yeah. No. I mean, granted, it's just Neil. I don't think many people really care about it. Yeah, I know, but still. I think that's the only reason why it got cl- passed. That's the closest thing we got to decapitation or or even killing in this in this whole series, really. Yeah. But, so, uh, yeah. Toothless bites off the eel's head. And, swallow, and swallows it. And now we see why most dragons don't like eels. It really makes them it makes them sick they get and we get this weird like kind of toothless vision where everything is like a fun house mirror found house mirror fever induced acid trip yeah yeah it looks like he's high yeah, you, know, you know and it really freaks him out and meanwhile back on book back everyone's on book, getting worse ev- everyone's getting worse the writers are starting to get sick and we have the. I think DreamWorks just okay. confirmed what Gobber. Yes. Yeah. I th- good work. Good job, DreamWorks. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, he kind of act, he acts like apparently his aunt Rose. You know, <laughs> has flowers are decorating his <laughs> helmet. He's got like a handkerchief on his hammer hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's and we thought it couldn't get any. Any funnier than that until when we cut back to Burke, you know, after Hiccup trying to find Toothless again, after, you know, escaping a barrage of fire, of red colored plasma blasts. And it increases his shot count. Yeah. Although it turns out to be more of a a cough, really. That's a cough. Explosive cough. I am. Well, shit. Yeah. So when we cut back to Burke again, we see the crowning gold of <laughs> comedy in this in this episode. I there's I no said, it's hard to describe. I said how much I love it when when you use out of char- when you use out of character stories just for comedic moments. And my god, the tw- the twins interaction actually brought a tear to my eye. It was so funny. I almost didn't want them to be cured. <laughs> they they sounded like scientists. Si- British scientists. For science. They even said science. Science. <laughs> oh my God. And that's what they said too. <coughs> it was so it was so brilliant. It was so beautiful. They, they, they were Comparing the fall rate of a feather in a rock. <laughs> and, and Rock not saying, Br- Brother dear, why don't we increase it further? I'm lis- I'm listening, dear sister. Why don't why don't we compare the fall rate between a grown <laughs> between a yak and a and a normal sized dragon rider? I li- I like it! And I am a, a normal sized dragon rider! What luck! <laughs> My god. Oh. And, and then, apparently, apparently, Snout Out became... Like Vladimir Lenin. I guess. He's now speaking to all the people who listen to him. <laughs> and everyone who will listen to him, yeah, including he's, dragons. He's the he's the voice of the people and the dragons. Which... Like, trying to unite them to, you know, like, to end the caste system. Which is weird, coming from Snout Out. I know. Which is why I think this is... <laughs> this... Eel, this eel pox, when when it, the fever hits a certain temperature, makes them act the opposite of who they are. I have to wonder what Astrid would be. Ladylike? What, like that bubblegum cheerleader? Maybe. Oh my god. And fish legs? Like snot lout? Ah! <laughs> no! And I think Stoic would probably be like a peacekeeper. Probably be like Henry Kissinger. <laughs> <laughs> and Hiccup? What? Well, hmm. Violence? Uh, may- maybe. He's, he's going to be like his father in the first movie. 
Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so everything was violence. So, yeah. But we don't really see that uh, uh, Astrid doesn't get si- doesn't get far enough in her illness. Unfortunately. Yeah. Or fortunately. Depending on how you look at it. I know. I, I kind of would have liked to see that. Maybe she would have been impulsive on her feelings. Ooh. That would have been great. Mm-hmm. All right. Fish legs doesn't get sick at all, and neither does Hiccup. But now we have a problem on the island. Uh-huh. Since uh, uh, Toothless does not know friend from foe, or rather... He can't tell the difference between friend from, fro- friend from foe, <laughs> unless, of course, you know, Hiccup is, Hiccup is hurt. Yeah. So he now has to try to contain Toothless and capture him. And, and it turns out there's something else on the island. Yes, the feeding grounds of the only dragon that can eat eels, a mm-hmm. uh, typhoon meringue, or infernado, as yes, we call it. Yes, we're now calling it an infernado. Yes. And or infernado. Yeah, infernado is... That's the, that's the right emphasis on the right syllable. Yes. And now, uh, I sh- this is actually a good episode that show Fish Legs Time to Shine. How so? Well, you saw that one movie he did against a dragon. What? Like he was, Oh yeah, the one move. I thought you said movie. No, <laughs> I said, no yeah, that he, move he, was... he, did, he did a couple moves and my god, Meatlog may look like a fat log, but he can move. I know, he spun like a top. I really thought, okay, please don't let don't <laughs> let it rip. <laughs> Beyblade. But, but please don't let it rip. <laughs> Yeah, because we've seen so we, so many fart jokes, so, from, so many fart jokes from Meat Lug. One of them <laughs> he actually used as a weapon. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. But you no, know, but yeah, we see a full-grown infernate infernado, and and of course, it's a green one. And when we first saw it, we I went not torch, not, not torch. torch! Oh. But we get these this cool these cool angles and light and lights and white and even wide shots too. It was it really was cool. And mind you, uh, I swear to this is the first time I see I would call it dragon bull riding. Dragon bull, yeah. Because Hiccup is trying to mount Toothless, and Toothless is not having it. No, and he's trying to his damnedest to buck him off. And so, and that goes in midair too. Yes, that is kind of scarier. <laughs> and but he event they eventually, you know, he eventually gets him where he wants him to be, which was to trap him in a net. But you know, he breaks free because it's made of twine and dragons breathe fire. Well, he but, said this explosive cough. Well, yeah. Still, it it, it is heat. True, it is heat. And, uh, you know, we get a break joke, because bef- when Hiccup is setting up the trap, he says, well, if that doesn't work, Meat Lug can always sit on him. <laughs> and that turns out to be true. Because Meat Lug does sit on him. Yes. And uh, it turns out that uh, when dragons eat eels, they get the same, the similar symptom. they get pretty much the same symptoms uh, that Vikings get. Uh, when they, when they get eel pox, get fever, they get fevers, uh, explosive, well, s- sneeze attacks, really. Yeah, explosive coughs. Yeah. That's what we call yeah. it. Yeah. So if so, if the eels are needed to cure humans, then maybe so hiccup makes the, makes the makes the leap that maybe just the ingredients that they have could cure them, and really it does turn out, it turns out. To be true, that damn train again. I know. I told you I hate the damn train. I know, I know. It comes by multiple times. But, anyways. But instead of being like a very quick cure-all, it actually takes time to settle down, which really is how it works. Yeah, real life medicine works. And... So, unfortunately, we have to cure the twins. We ha- Yeah, we have to cure and, them. And it was funny, because God was like, triple dose for them. <laughs> yeah, the twins in their fever-induced brain actually invent ice cream. Yes. And Gobber thinks that's barbaric. I know. I'm going to cry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, but, you know, if they didn't, if they 
did do that, then Lamar's wouldn't be the ice cream capital of the world. There I'm... wouldn't be any Wells Blue Bunny. It'd probably be Wells Blue Yak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... My God, try, try to picture every episode of us, the twins, acting like the way they were. <laughs> it wouldn't be the same, because, you know, we're missing that, that hint of mischievousness, but... I know, but it's, it was it's so great. It was so beautiful. It really brought a tear to my eye. It brought a tear to my eye that it's not I was trying to become a people person. I know. And that's that's what, why I like... This like, is... That's why I like com- comedy stories, especially when you add in that out of characterness. <laughs> and this episode made the top ten. It's I mean, kind of high tiers. I think it would make my top ten simply because not only for comedy, really, but because it shows how far Hiccup and Toothless will go for each other. Hiccup was even, was willing to bite and swallow an eel to protect Hiccup. Yeah, but I also thought it showed the more or less progress of also fish legs. I uh, yeah yeah, especially considering that. Fish like went against a typhoon rain. Yeah. Oh, we also we also learned that uh, when when in Infernados, it's gonna take a while for that for that name to actual to yeah. actually yeah uh, catch on for us. Uh, when they run out when they run out of shot limits, they eat more eels and it recharges them and comes a fire world one that which is what gives birth to its name Infernado. Uh, but no, this I I my pros and cons on this one. Uh, I really don't have very few cons for this. Really, pros is the fact that it brought something new to the table, really new. Um, because the fact that it's, up till now we didn't see Vikings getting sick. We didn't know if they could get sick. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming they did, but they didn't really show it. So hey, that's something new. Another new thing is heh, why. Are, Dragons are afraid of eels. Oh, okay. And it's something new to, I guess, the lore. Yeah, this is more of the lore episode. This is, this is why I want more, ish, more of the world building. Yes, and mind you, you can still do world building while adding comedy, as this episode yeah. episode delicately expressed. Right. My pros were. What you said, but also the the angles, the POV shots, and the use of lighting. Yes. And there were, like, several great shots, especially when uh, that type boomerang is introduced, and you see, like, the silhouette and those li- and light rays, you know, kind of, uh, kind of still form- forming that silhouette around, uh, around it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but... There's, there's, there's really no cons I can take out. The only really... con, the only con was, is that why did, why couldn't they have just gone and try to find Torch? Yeah, that's really it. I mean, granted, Torch is not the most. I, I wouldn't say he's docile, but he's friendly enough. Yeah, he's friend. Well, he's friendly towards Hiccup. Yeah, and <laughs> tough enough. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is this was a great episode, really. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, have anything. Really. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Just nothing but praise for this episode. No, uh, I guess uh, that's a wrap. Oh yeah, and we'll see you next time on the Vendors of Berg. Hmm. <laughs>